What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to install this. A basic Bosch tack into the K5 Blazer. This install is going to be very similar to any of the old square body trucks or, or any of the Chevy cars for that matter in terms of wiring and the general principles can be applied to installing an aftermarket tack in pretty much any vehicle uh, that has a distributor. It's very important. Has a distributor, single coil. Um, so this is a Bosch FST 7906. These Bosch gauges are good. They're medium price. I think I paid about 45 bucks for this one. You can find some that are down in the low, low to mid 20 range, um, but they are kind of lethargic to respond. And, and I figured, you know, it's a buy once, cry once type deal and just get it installed. Uh, so I'm gonna get this thing unboxed and we'll take a look at what's inside the package. So the kit comes with actual metal mounting brackets, which is cool. Bolts, vampire taps, all this kind of stuff. Um, and a pretty good manual that reminds you not to smoke cigarettes around open gas, um, which is good. You know, I feel like we should all be reminded of that every now and then. So here's our gauge. We're going to do a little bit of functional testing here on the car before we bother installing anything anywhere. So basically the four wires that come out of this, uh, red is your plus 12, black is your ground, white is for illumination if you want the uh, light in the, in the gauge to come on. Uh, let me see if I can demonstrate that for you guys. So that is dark gauge. And if we touch this to here, oh man, I don't know if you can capture that, but there's a tiny little bit of light back there. It's not much of a not much of a backlight, but uh, the important wire is the green one, which we have going back here. This is the negative terminal on the coil. Um, this is specifically for measuring RPM. This is just a spade connector I crimped on. I'm gonna uh, melt down that heat shrink afterwards. But right now, if I go get the keys and fire it up, the tack should work. So it's super loud, but you can see. We're running, and if I rev this guy, the gauge responds, comes back down. We're at a high idle right now because it's cold outside. Went ahead and turned off the motor because it's super loud. But basically, you have this. This is just like a little red pointer. It's not really anything, just a piece of plastic. I arbitrarily set it to 5,500 RPM. Um, I don't think this engine will ever actually see that, but it doesn't serve as any sort of like uh, feedback. It just it just lets you know where where you want red line to sit. Uh, so you can move it up or down. You can remove it entirely. It doesn't really matter. Um, that's pretty much it. As you can see, it works. Now the only thing we got left is to mount it on the dash and uh, wire it and wiring it is simply a matter of finding uh, plus 12 you know under the dash somewhere um, and the illumination circuit is is it's not very not real bright um, but we can wire that into illumination you can wire it into the headlights you can wire it into the illumination thing on the radio um, there's a couple of different places I uh, I'll probably wire it in just since we're doing it, um, but it's kind of kind of optional, I guess. So let's go find some cool places to uh, install this bad boy. So down here, there's a hole in the firewall right down there. It didn't have a grommet. We put in a slightly oversized grommet. That's where our uh, green wire is going to run through. Um, and then all of the power and the illumination, everything is under the dash. So we got to find uh, where we got 12 volts and jumper off of one of those fuses. So let me show you guys this install. So basically there's our gauge. When I put the truck in drive, it obviously drops down. All I did was I tied it into the radio circuit for now. So we have the illumination to the illumination, the switch 12 volt. We've got um, power to constant power 12 volt. The ground is right there and there's our hole that goes through. And uh, let me grab the keys um, and fire it up for you guys and show what it looks like. Now you might be saying to yourself, Max, 
even by your standards, this is a little too roadkill hacked. And you're right. Normally I don't install shit like this. Um, however, I did this install and I think I've been out here for like 20 minutes maybe. Uh, and the reason it is installed like this, and there is a reason, um, this whole dash needs to come out. The mess of aftermarket and factory wires behind it is crazy. Um, I've got stuff going places I don't even know what it does or what it is, and it, I, I can't stand that. So at some point here in the future, um, we're gonna install a sound system, and this whole dash pad and cluster and stuff are gonna come out, and I'm gonna get rid of every piece of wire that doesn't belong, and when I do that, I will run this tack correctly and after I reinstall the dash, because uh, it's fine here on the column for now. I have it basically zip tied in, um, but eventually I would like it to be up on the dash. So um, that is the direction we're gonna go. Um, the other option is I have this basically dead gauge panel spot um, and I haven't taken this dash off. I've never worked on one of these trucks so I don't know what's back there but we might try to incorporate it into the factory dash or something. Um, but everything that you've seen in this video is still true. Um, I showed you guys how to wire it up, how to hook it up. The locations don't change. Um, you know, if somebody thinks hooking it up to the back of the radio is a bad idea, come fight me on the internet, it's fine. Um, there's absolutely no reason you couldn't hook this uh, to the back of uh, your radio. It doesn't pull very much power. So here is our tack. So enough talking. So basically the way this works is if I do that, you know, when I'm in drive, the tack is right there. So going down the road, I can see it clearly. Um, like I said, this is mostly a monitoring thing. So there are going to be times where I'm like, I need to see the tack based on what I'm doing and then I can look at it. Uh, it doesn't really need to be in my field of vision 24-7. This is not a race car, so let me put this back in park, fire it up. So you can see, it's idling. You know, the tack reacts really well. Um, it's nice and crisp, comes right back down. And if we put the truck in drive, you can see, um, you know, you're basically the camera's basically where my face is. It's a good point of view because you're normally up here somewhere in the two to three thousand RPM range. It's easy to see. It's just zip tied to this steering column here. Uh, nothing, nothing super fancy. Um, and I just zip tied the wires up out of the way so they're not in the way of my feet. Um, like I said, all this is reasonably temporary. Uh, it's not meant to be kind of a final solution. I'm definitely going to do a much cleaner install later on. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Uh, I will put the link to this meter down in the description below. And you can check out all the parts that I use on this build and on my adventure trailer build in the links in the description below. Love you guys. Peace.